everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Successful Women's TV Show. My name is Galit Ventura-Rose, and I am co-founder of Everyday Woman TV and a professional speaker. One of my favorite things to do in the world is spotlight women all over the world that are doing amazing things to help others. I am so excited today to have with me Dr. Robin. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I know that you're joining us all the way from Virginia, right near Washington, D.C., so that's exciting, too. You're literally on the other side of the United States for me because I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, oh, wow. almost the farthest you can be. So yeah. thank you for joining me. It's so nice to have technology to be able to do this and spotlight what you are doing. So I'm going to share a little bit about Dr. Robin J. Bell. She's a retired veteran who served in the Army honorably for 20 years. Thank you. I love hearing that about women, especially. You're welcome. Thank After you. After retirement in 2005, Robin worked as a contractor in the intelligence community. Oh, I love that. In 2018, she founded the nonprofit organization, Rehabilitation, Reform, and Reentry Resources. I'm so excited that you're going to be sharing that, as well as today, you're going to be sharing with anybody that's listening and watching how to start their own nonprofit. Yes. Dr. Bell is a fierce advocate of prison reform and is it recidivist? No. Oh my gosh, just you say it. You got it. You got it. You know say it? Okay. Recidivism. Recidivism. Mm -hmm. I learned a new word today. I love that. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Prison reform and recidivism reduction. Thank you. Gosh, that's a mouthful. It's three R's. <laughs> it really is. With her experience, R4 helps returning citizens deal with the many obstacles and challenges they will face on reclimating into society, reacclimating into society. I'm so excited to hear so much more about this. We have a great program like that in Las Vegas that I love, and so many dear friends of mine are involved in as well. So I'm excited to hear about the things that your nonprofit is doing and to share with other women how they themselves can have their own nonprofit as well. So First of all, Dr. Robin, why this nonprofit? You've got to share me with me what passion you have and why is it this nonprofit from all the different ones that you could start? Um, Galit, first, thank you for having me. And this nonprofit, it started uh, when I was in the military and I traveled the world uh, facilitating classes on treating others with dignity and respect with the Army Corps of Engineers. And when I wasn't traveling, I really didn't have much to do in DC, which was where headquarters was. So I got certified as a mediator and I would mediate at the DC Superior Court. Okay. I saw so many young men of color come through the uh, legal system with low level drug offenses. So I said, once I retire from the military and the disparity uh, sentencing was so wide, I said, I want to make a difference in these young men and women's lives. So after I retired from the military, I went back to school, I got my doctorate, and I always knew that I wanted to work, um, you know, with men and women um, who had been incarcerated. And my dissertation was on shared experiences of uh, nonviolent African-American males with drug addiction. So it's been a passion for a long time. I love that. And, and one of my favorite things to do when I interview women on this show is just not just read about their passion, but hear about it. There's just something about the voice and the sharing and, and how it really drives so many of us to do what we love. If it's in nonprofits or giving back our time or our money to nonprofits, if we can't start one, right? Mm -hmm. I know that I get asked often a lot because I'm a nonprofit girl. I don't have one. I love to be involved in other people's nonprofits and I have been my entire life. But with somebody listening and watching, could you maybe take us through a few of the steps of how you started your nonprofit and maybe some of the challenges, obstacles you overcame and even some of the things that you needed to know? Okay, um, the way that I started my nonprofit, first of all, you have to have a passion. It should be something that you really love doing. And then once you decide that, you know, you want to start a nonprofit, then you have to come up with a name. Um, then you have to do all the uh, EIN tax ID numbers. You have to make sure no one else has that name. 
And so that's basically how you get started. You have to have a mission. You want to know what it is you want this nonprofit to provide or to prove or to assist other people. So you come up uh, with your, you, you need a passion and you need your mission statement. And then you just go through all the legalities of getting your name and your uh, tax ID number. And honestly, it's as simple as that. Oh, amazing. And how long did it take you to get approved to be a nonprofit? About two months. That's amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's doable. A lot of Very. people that reach out to me and ask me about it, they get so overwhelmed thinking that it's so complicated and so difficult. But at the end of the day, there are so many people like you out there that are doing it and, and are having success with it. So anybody listening and watching, if there's something that you're passionate about that you want to have your nonprofit, absolutely go out there and take it. And if you don't know how to get it, ask, ask people to do. Absolutely. Let's Let's talk a little bit about when you first got started and what organizations that you work with and so on and so forth. So we can really dive deeper into your nonprofit and learn a little bit more about it. Okay. When we first got started, I'm the founder. My husband's the co-founder. When I first got started, uh, we were both still in the intelligence community, working at the Pentagon and things like that. So once we got started, got all the legalities out of the way, then we needed to figure out how to raise money. Uh, yes. Because what is the point in having a nonprofit if you can't raise money? Right. So we figured out ways uh, to uh, raise money for the nonprofits. We have an annual charity golf tournament. Um, we started the nonprofit in 2018. So it was right around the time when COVID hit in 2019, 2020. So we had to come up with creative ways to uh, start money. So we had bike challenges online and things of that nature. So one of the stressors uh, for a nonprofit is to be able to raise money and everyone will not believe or have a passion for your passion. Because especially with the nonprofit that we have, uh, a lot of people haven't been impacted by on the other end of men and women that's incarcerated. They may have had someone, you know, who was robbed or murdered. I mean, unfortunately. So yes. you just have to, you know, be very careful uh, how you uh, approach people because everybody is not passionate about what you are and everyone, you know, don't want to participate. But the hardest thing was raising money. Now we got that down. So uh, it's doable, very doable. Amazing, amazing. I love that. So tell us some of your success stories. I would love to hear a little bit about your success stories and then almost like a day to day of what your day looks like running a nonprofit. Uh, some of my success stories is um, in 2020, I was offered a contract. I have a consulting company as well, Bell Consulting Group, with DC Department of Corrections. And with that contract, we were awarded $1.4 million. And with that $1.4 million, any returning citizens from DC who were juvenile lifers at the time any employer who would hire them, we paid their salary with that $1.4 million. Wow. Mm -hmm. we, DC was the only, it's still the only place in the country that has done that. Uh, we paid their salary. We provided uh, workforce development, professional development, dressing for success, interview skills. We taught these men and women everything that they needed to know to be productive citizens of society. And it's not, honestly, it's not a week that goes past that I don't receive an email, a text, or a phone call. Dr. Bell, that program saved my life. Dr. Bell, you saved my life. So, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's on the website. We have success stories, but I we have so many uh, men and women. We had one young man who was incarcerated uh, for 18 years and he was released as homeless, wow. indigent and with cancer. Wow. And he had no one and R4 stepped in. So I have so many stories that I could tell, 
but I will, um, you How know, wonderful give, is that? That's How amazing. wonderful is it that you have so many stories that you can tell? May every nonprofit have that problem, right, Dr. Val? Yes, I mean, ma'am. Please never feel bad about how many success stories you have. I love, I love, I love that. All right. So take us through a day in the life of a nonprofit founder, Dr. Robin Bell. Take us through a day of in the life, maybe like a typical day that you would experience with a nonprofit. Okay, a day in the life, a typical day that I would experience with a nonprofit is um, receiving a phone call or an email or, or text from a returning citizen saying, just last week, Dr. Bell, I'm not able to work. I, you know, lost my job for a while because of an illness. I can't pay my rent. Can you help with the rent? Um, we also, we, and that's what our nonprofit does. We provide all of those, you know, resources for returning citizens. So we help pay the rent. Um, Dr. Bell, I have a daughter that's going to college and all of these are returning citizens. We can't provide, we don't have the money to get him or her started. R4, we provide scholarships for college bound seniors who are impacted by incarceration. Uh, at Christmas time, I might receive a call, Dr. Bell, is there any way that your organization can help us with getting our children's toys and presents for Christmas, Thanksgiving meals? That is what I experience. So it's really day. a lot of requests. I mean, it's really, oh, yes. you don't yes. always know what your day is going to look like Absolutely. But based on the needs or the calls or the emails that you receive. And then it sounds like you just kind of get to work. Yeah, I get to work. I get, I have an amazing team. Mm. Um, and that's what we do. We change lives. That's exactly. And I always say that we don't just help people. We change lives. Mm -hmm. And we work with those who most consider the loss last and least desirable. So Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's amazing because that's where the need is. Mm -hmm such a need. So how large is your team? I have five team members, four, five board members, and I have so many volunteers because I am an adjunct at American University. And you would not believe how these young people, it, unbelievable to me, the majority of my students are white or international students. And these students are just so invested mm -hmm. in working with returning citizens. So I have so many volunteers from my students at American University that just want to help. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so mm -hmm. I have a huge team. So what kind of things do some of the volunteers do? Oh, some of the volunteers, you know, teach them their interview skills. Some of them help them with resumes. Uh, some of them teach them how to ride the Metro. Some of them, you know, just help them just whatever the things that they need, how to write a book. We have a couple of uh, returning citizens that wanted to write a book. The re um, students would help edit the book and documentaries, they would help him with that. Um, my last semester, I actually had the entire semester, the students did a documentary with returning citizens who were juvenile lifers. And I brought in the juvenile lifers and they were amazing. The documentaries were amazing. I love that you give people the opportunity to really be hands-on and they're making such a difference. It sounds like these volunteers are also very passionate and very. Really enjoy what they're doing. All right. Yes. So tell everybody how they can learn more about what you do, your services, even your consulting firm, but look, please share a little bit about how they can learn more about the nonprofit and about you. Okay. So with the nonprofit, you can go to my website, uh, www.r4.com the number four resources.org. And you can go to that website and you can learn everything. You can hear the amazing stories. Um, my consulting company, Bell Consulting Group is www.bellcgroup.com. And um, you can learn with the consulting firm as well. We do a lot of work with local, state and federal prisons and institutions that, you know, house returning citizens. So both of uh, my organizations, 
do mostly the same thing. So yeah, they work can, hand in hand. It makes a lot of sense because you can offer these services and this consulting as well as then you can help the people that are coming back into the community. So it works really, really well. Well, yeah. thank you for everything you do. It was such a pleasure learning more about your nonprofit and learning more about you. And thank you. It's just such a pleasure to talk to someone like you to see your life's passion and that you're living it every day. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the show today. Gilly, thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody watching and listening today, thank you so much for being here for another episode of the Successful Women's TV show. My name is Galit Ventura-Rosen, and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye, Galit. Bye, everybody.